Hello. It is April 13, 2011. Wow. This is my brand new camera. <laughs> can you, can you, my friends, see the difference? I can. I can. Oh, I made a test run. Because I tell you right now, the theme of this video is the Wall of Thrones is a two-edged sword. Dr. Philip Dreis provided information to every single political office who took that information by a bunch of staffers who weren't, they weren't, they didn't have the brains, the education, or anything to do with what I was serving on New York City Housing Authority other than Tom Crater, by the time I got figured out what was going on, he told me, Joyce, man, I can't understand what, 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 what you're talking about here, man. Said, but, but Joyce, you're doing things, I nobody's ever done this. No joke. And now, the only threat I can be is a threat of me being happy with myself. In exposing all the crookedness, all the little crimes and violations that I harvested in working for the Democratic Party, being used by these politicians. I got stuff on Congressman Meeks. I got stuff on everybody, 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 everybody. With this bad boy, I gotta hold it out here. Cause it's almost like I'm getting crimped. I mean, I'm coming in so clear. I'm seeing my blemish. How you doing? I'm feeling great. I hope you've been enjoying my shows. And this is an announcement that in fact, I'm on my way to the studio to put together a McLaughlin group style of interviews that will culminate in about a three hour mini series and that's with no commercials so we're talking about with commercials on besides public access but on primetime TV network TV talking about a four hour mini series on what happened to me and the discovery of the remaining family member issue being raped by New York City Housing Authority and it is alleged that's on the orders or the policy of the Bloomberg administration when he came into power and on July 11, 2003, the hatchet fell on a whole lot of people who should have been given a competent administrative process in order to remain in that apartment by federal law, a federal multi-generational aspect of public housing. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't. Because see, I didn't live in the projects. My aunt, Naomi Peltier, used to live at Shelton House. She did not accept the $15,000 buyout. For 11 years, the apartment was empty, and my sister, big sister, I mean, she's blood first cousin, but my big sister, who was raised like that, was paying off Glenn Clark $1,000 a year under the Larry Augustover administration in order to fudge the paperwork so we could keep the apartment as storage unit. In 1997, I came to take over the apartment Years later, a few years later, after a whole lot of stuff and making peace with NYCHA under the Giuliani administration, we ended up, my mother ended up being on the apartment because I didn't want my name on the apartment. I had no plans of staying there. Then it led to my mother going to a nursing home. They knew I was occupying the apartment. And for that many years, I became a remaining family member who should have been given an administrative process rather than having been taken to landlord-tenant court in a holdover proceeding 
and defamed and slandered, emotionally and psychologically maimed. I went for help to every local black politician in Southeast Queens. They played with my life. They had a bunch of little girls in there who seemed to think everybody wanted to come around like be, uh, you know, like got pheromone all up in the freaking nose. And hey, hey, I'm not there for that. I'm not there for that. I'm not there for that. And that's their trick. That's their gimmick. Ida Smith, her thing is being somebody's mama. It helps contain a lot of things, help discourage you. But all I know is the police is looking for me and they're looking for me hard. A lot of people telling me. And I'm no threat to anybody. I wouldn't have hurt anybody for anything under the sun. Number one, not because I don't want to, I don't want to go to jail. But the biggest thing is I think it's immoral. I don't do violence. Trust me, I know what violence is. I know what it's all about. This I do. And everything I'm doing to you right now, with in a non-violent way, that's because I learned about violence. The United States Army Special Forces Airborne Ranger. First medical battalion. That's how I was able to save the screen. Save Tom Prater's life. Or keep him from being maimed and crippled from the stroke he had. I've done so much good. There's no reason for me to do anything irrational or violent that would make all of this go away. And that's exactly what they want because that's the African-American M.O. Big black dumb motherfucking nigga can't do shit but get pissed off and want to fight because they frustrate you so bad. I'm more resilient than you. I was trained by you. Great Anglo-American Empire of the United States of America. <laughs> and now, I'm going to harvest my field of plenty. My acres and acres of diamonds. Which is the reputation, the fame. And I'm going to make them spend a lot of money in the litigations of Congressman Meeks, United States Senator Huntley, United States Senator Malcolm Smith, Assemblywoman Vivian Cook with that cancer. And Councilman Conley, I got so much in your boy Rance Huff, you had what is called command responsibility. You got the pony up. <laughs> and so will every one of you guys. You're looking to bog me down some kind of criminal matter? About what? About what? I, what, what am I going to do to you guys? You know how much work that would take? I don't have the kind of time to waste. I want to get paid. Now it's about getting paid. It's all about getting paid. It ain't revenge. It's about getting paid. I already got revenge. I pissed you off. And everybody knows I say you're a piece of shit. I even sent you. Me finally taking a crap in the toilet bowl. And I had form in my stool. Remember, Congressman, you often sent me to the VA to get poisoned, be fed lithium to calm me down because, I, oh, what a vicious human rights violation. I'm going to bust your ass in court for it. So go talk to your little Indian medicine woman. I don't give a damn what she said, what she do. She ain't never, never going to get your land back. <laughs> Isn't that revenge enough? Now it's time to get paid. It's time to get dead serious. And it's time to get paid. For Dr. Philippe Edouard Peace. Pour faire quelque chose. Personne dans la vie. Dans l'existence des États-Unis. A fait. C'est apporté. Cinq. Gouverneurs. Des personnes qui sont électées dans, dans, dans ces bureaux. Au tribunal. Avec. L'homme qui contrôlait les maisons publiques, faut bien vous Bloomberg. Et je vais faire Bloomberg très mal quand il regarde qu'est-ce que tu fais, parce qu'il t'aime pour ce que tu, ce que tu fais pour lui. Je vais t'apprendre le son, je vais lui apprendre le son, je vais te montrer quelque chose et tu vas me dire, oh. Oh, Eddie, chérie, Q, 
just because you can fake. You betrayed me if you did. I ain't trying to kill you, hurt you, or nothing. I just want to bust your ass in court, harvest your reputation, your fame, and make it mine, and pat myself on the back. That's it. So the police, I don't give a damn who you are, what you got, what you, what you think. You better check out their freaking story, unlike Dominic Rafter of the Southeast Queen's Press, who didn't check out that fake death threat orchestration by Shirley Huntley. I got a whole lot of evidence coming up for you guys. Woo! Yeah, going to the dentist soon. Next Wednesday or Thursday. I'll be out of town. By Monday, I'm gone. Today's the 13th. <laughs> when I come back, I'm going to bust your ass in court. I'm going to bust your ass in court. And I don't care who looking. I don't care who looking. I don't, what? Oh, you one of my white friends? One of my white friends? Well, let me tell you what I said. Let me tell you one more time so you don't think I made a mistake. I'm going to take them black niggas to court and I'm going to bust their black ass. This a nigga fight. Six African Americans against one Haitian. And I'm telling you, I'm going to bust their ass. Because they brought a war to my fucking door. It didn't stop it. It was their job. So, pay, you didn't pay me then. You got to pay me now, just like Tom. I'm about to file that notice of claim and get out of town. <laughs> yes, I am. It's $75,000 commission because I can prove I put up over 5,000 posters. Go call Ida Smith. I used to report to her in the congressman's office. Got more videos coming out, baby. Bye-bye.